let's think about, let's change a little bit from osteoporosis to osteoarthritis. And one of the problems that we have in, um, one of the problems that we have in our bodies with related to osteoarthritis is often the knee. Yeah, people, anybody here got a, got knee pain? Something going on with their knee, the knee holds them back for walking or exercising, doesn't feel great when you're standing, when you're walking, can't get up and down like you used to, you don't even try anymore from the floor, you might try from a chair. So we're going to teach you a beginning of one of our processes called springy knees or knee bends a knee. And I'm going to bring um, Brian up with me because he's going to be my uh gonna be your model in case you need one yeah so a few of you've got a problem with knees yeah jane and shireen sharon sharon not shireen so first if you will please for those of you who can come up to standing come up to stand i don't think i can give you an alternate for this one for sitting. There are other things we could do in sitting for the knees, but this will be standing. You need to have your fingers on a chair or the wall, something for balance. That's okay. And Brian's got a lovely fan blowing there on his shirt because it is hot in Cincinnati these days. And not as hot as it is in you know, Phoenix, but we think it's pretty hot. Now, maybe you know exactly which knee you would like to improve. Maybe you don't, but let's, so let's select one. So to select a knee that you want to improve, you are going to stand in a small step position. How about we put the right foot in front, a little bit in front and the left foot just a little bit behind. Okay. Right foot a little bit in front, the left foot a little bit behind. And you want a little more of your weight on the back foot. You want a little more of your weight on the back foot. Now, if you don't really need to look at the monitor, don't, because you will interfere with your ability to feel yourself. So I do have Brian up here because you've been schooled to think you have to see somebody. And so we're going to let you see somebody, but the truth is you don't need to see anybody. You need to be with yourself. We're doing the right foot in front, left foot behind, and it's a small step position. Your weight is a little bit more on the left foot, the foot that's behind, and you're going to begin to sink or bend your knees a little bit and then come back up. And you'll feel what is the quality in the knee that's behind, in this case, the left knee with that bending and unbending. Does it like it? Does it not like it? Now, here's a cheat some of you are going to do. And I'm going to have you look for a moment at the screen so Brian can show you this cheat. Some of you will start with your leg on the back foot, but then you'll immediately offload that back leg and bend the emphasis on the knee going forward in front. And that's because you already know your back leg is going to hurt. So you're like, I don't want to be on it. <laughs> so, so do try to keep your weight a little more on the back leg and go more straight down. And you only have to go a fourth of an inch, right? It, you don't have to go deep, just a tiny little. And you'll start to feel how does the knee and the back feel about that? Okay, so that's the left knee and back. Let's switch it up. We're going to compare it to when your right knee is in the back. So when your right knee is in the back, again, just a small step position, not a big one. That big step position is another way people will cry to fool themselves. Brian is on the screen, so go to speaker view. And if you can't see it because you're on a phone, you'll just probably have to flip through the screens because I can't control it on a phone but I have Brian up right beside me. So now again, the weight is a little bit on the back leg and you begin to bend your knees and you're comparing the sensation now in the back leg, which is your right one, to the sensation of when the left leg was in the back. Can you switch back and forth 
to select a knee you would like to improve. Now, some of you, maybe you have absolutely no problem with either knee, so you'll just have to say, ah, I'm gonna just improve my left. But others of you will have a clear. Yeah, the feet are not important at all. Totally not important, they're just flat on the ground. Okay, good. Everybody can select or has selected a knee they would like to improve. Now you're gonna need probably a towel. So you wanna have one of those couple of towels with you that we talk about. And I'll show you in a minute, or Brian will show you in a minute why you will want that towel. So the setup is gonna be that you're gonna stand facing the wall. If you could just put the towel down for a minute, Brian. I do want you to look at Brian for a moment. So you see that Brian is facing the wall. Can you move a little towards your bookcase, Brian? Yeah, good, a little more. Okay, and now can you lower your camera just, uh, I mean, raise your camera just a hair, just a hair. That might be too much, we'll see. Okay, we'll take that. So you see that Brian's elbows are quite bent. He's not standing a long ways away from the wall. And you do not wanna be leaning into the wall, no leaning. And now Brian is gonna cross the leg he wants to improve and he's choosing the left. He's going to cross it in front so that his left foot heel is uh, in front of the back toes. Okay. In this position, I'm going to show you just two more things and then we'll talk, walk you through it again. He's going to begin to start to bend his back knee, which is passively going to carry the front knee forward. But some of you will feel like that is too big of a gap. So you'll want a towel between your knees. So Brian will show you what that would look like. So you just fill that gap in. Okay, good. So now you understand. I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing. And Brian, you can let it go for a moment. So the rest of you, please find your place at the wall. You're going to put your hands on the wall with your elbows quite bent. You're not a long ways away. You're not leaning on your hands. Your hands might be about shoulder height. This is not a push up. It's not a stretch. Bones for Life is not about those things. And then from within that position, you're going to put the leg in front that you want to improve the knee on. Mm -hmm and decide if you're gonna to want a to towel between your knees. And here is the key. Here is the key. You're going to bend the back knee so that you passively carry the front knee forward. The knee that you want to improve is never actively bending. The back knee passively carries the front knee forward. Breath is easy. Breath is easy. You don't need to go down into a squat. You just do a few simple movements and notice as you do it, what changes in the shape of your low back, what changes in where your sacrum or tail is angled, Good, let it go, uncross your legs. Just stand for a moment. And some of you already feel there's something a little interesting in that knee that I wanna improve. Something maybe just a tiny bit more spacious. If you can't see me, it's just, if it's because you're on a phone. If you can't see Brian, it's because you're on a phone. Uh, I have Brian spotlighted for you. So you'll have to flip through the screens. There's nothing I can really do about that, that I know of. I can only affect it on laptops and desktops. Now, Brian is going to come back. So you come back to the wall again. 
you have the one leg crossed in front that you want to improve, always the same leg crossed in front that you want to improve. And place the top of your head where you would wear a hat on the wall. Place the top of your head where you would wear a hat on the wall, where you would have a yarmulke or somebody attached a little spinny toy to the top of your head. And begin to bend the back knee so that you passively carry the front knee forward and let that change your height so that your head ends up sliding down the wall like you're drawing a line on the wall with your head. Now, of course, your head is not leaning on the wall. It's just barely touching it. Then you unbend. And of course, as you unbend, the spine changes its shape and the head comes back up. And then you bend the back knee and it drags it down. And then you unbend and you bend the back knee. Watch yourself. Your tendency will be to bend the front knee. Be sure it's the back knee you're bending, not the front knee. Okay, lovely. Let it go. Bring yourself up, uncross your legs. So those are the two movements uh, that we can that we're going to explore today. There's more to this process. Really cool stuff, actually. But those those are the two that I think we can explore today. So let's find out if that knee improved for you. So remember the knee that you wanted to improve. Our test is to put it slightly behind in a small step position. The one that you wanted to improve is slightly behind in a small step position. Your weight is just a little bit more in the back knee as you bend and unbend the knees and you feel, does it take this bending and unbending a little bit nicer, a little bit easier? Gosh, I wish I'd have done this. And then walk around, walk around and feel what you feel in walking. Walk it, feel it for a moment before you start coming to the computer and writing. Be with yourself for a moment. Maybe there's just some other quality to it. Now they're almost magic, Kettlin says. Almost magic, no pain in my bad knee. Yeah, so maybe that feels like your little magic wand. I said I didn't have any magic wands, but maybe we have a little bones for life or really it's your own body magic. It's the own magic of your body when we interact with it as a system. So some of you are gonna have gotten improvement with it for sure. Me feels much better. No pain in my chronic painful knee, helped a lot. Mm. Now, some of you might have noticed there's some other kind of quality, like you stood up a little different. So it doesn't have to be only your knee. Some of you may have felt like my ankle now feels a little bit better. If you found it too challenging to do the bend and unbend, you can let one or both of your heels rise off the ground. Do keep the balls of both feet on the ground though. A lot of improvement, a lot of improvement. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, opposite hip hurts more now though. Yeah, so maybe for you, it would be less twisting, Barbara. I wouldn't even put your whole foot in front. I'd put it kind of off to the side and put a towel there and just barely catch the inside of that leg. Pelvis more free, beautiful. Okay, 